Amen. Holy is your name. The name of Jesus is holy. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you tonight. Welcome to our teleconference. Another night we are here to talk about Jesus and what he has done for us. We are blessed today to be alive and well and looking, giving God glory for all that he has done. It's a wonderful day today. We are truly blessed. We are blessed more than we can imagine. Our blessing that the Lord has bestowed upon us is beyond measure. So we give him thanks and we give him praise and we give him glory. So God bless you. We are going back into our teleconference and um, we're going to continue our topic. And the topic of our topic this week is of um, God is not a mystery. God is not a mystery. God is not a mystery. And that's something that we should try to understand that mystery of this life is not about God. It's about man. It's about the devil. And, um, you know, we want to recap on what we did the f f last two weeks. And we think about what with Abraham and also with the story of Genesis where we see that <coughs> God was not a mystery in when he told Adam that um, of every trees in the garden he could freely eat, but the tree that's in the midst of in the garden, they should not eat of it. And we see that um, Eve disobeyed the word of God and ate the fruit, and Adam ate the fruit, and we see what happened after, after that, that they found that they were naked. And nakedness is not a good thing. Even though they did, they were naked before, but they did not realize their nakedness because there was clothed in the presence of God. When we are clothed in the presence of God, we can't be naked. You know, the presence of God is so great, it's so awesome, it's so glorious that there's no nakedness in the eyesight of God. Praise the name because all things are good. Praise the Lord Jesus. But when Adam disobeyed God, he discovered his eyes was open and he saw that he was naked and they were both naked because the devil tricked Eve. And um, because the way he tricked Eve, Eve went and ate the fruit of the that was in the midst of the garden we see what happened but before we go on our short prayer father we thank you we praise you we bless your holy name thank you for your loving kindness thank you for your tender mercies for you bless us lord and direct us lord as we go into your word we give you thanks we give you praise we give you glory in jesus name amen amen so firstly i want to look at genesis chapter genesis chapter three and this is God's pronunciation upon Eve, Adam, and the serpent because they were all involved in the transgressions. And um, if I read from verse 15 of Genesis chapter 3, it says, verse 15, now verse 14, it says, The Lord said, The Lord said unto the serpent. Now God is talking to the serpent who beguiled Eve. The Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all the cattle and above every beast in the field and Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thou shalt eat, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. 
unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrows and thy conception. In sorrow shalt thou bring forth children, and thy desire shall be unto thy husband and he shall rule over thee. And unto, unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Curse is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shall he eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth unto thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. And in the sweat of thy face Thou shalt eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it thou was taken, for thus thou art, and unto thus shalt done with shall thou return. Thus thou art, and unto thus shalt thou return. So God now pronounced pronounce judgment because he's a great judge because of the transgression, because of the disobedience of Adam and Eve and because of the serpent who beguiled them. The, the serpent was the start of all this because as we know he tempted Eve he went against the order and the ordinance of God and he tempted Eve and said that God's... Uh, in, initially he accused God of not being truthful to his creation, to his creatures. He accused God because God told Adam, you will surely die if you eat of the fruit. And the serpent, the evil one, told the woman, he shall not surely die. Obviously, she, they did not die immediately, but death was pronounced on them. So eventually, the death was pronounced on them. God pronounced the death on them, that thus thou art, and thus shalt thou return. That is the judgment. And so God is not mysterious in this instant, because God had already, already had warned Adam not to eat of the fruit. So there's no mystery in that. It's just clear and plain. If Adam obeyed God, then there would not be any problem. Everything would be beautiful, wonderful, glorious, joyful, you know, and all this would not have happened. They would have been blessed in their coming in. They'll be blessed in their going out. They'll be blessed on every side and the presence of God would be with them. They would be protected from every sort of danger scene. They could have walked around in the garden among the lion and the bear and the snake and all the, um, the hazardous, um, dangerous animals that may be found. They could sail around the world and whatever. They, they, could have, they were so free. There was nothing that could harm them. There was nothing that could harm them. But because they, because Adam disobeyed God, then all the gates of hell were flung open. And we see that God pronounced this upon the serpent. First he, he pronounced judgment upon the serpent. He said, the Lord said unto the serpent, Thou, because... Because thou hast done this. So God is pronouncing judgment. The great God is judge, pronouncing judgment. He said, thou art cursed. 
thou art cursed a curse came upon the serpent so you know God is a great judge he cursed the serpent curse are thou above all the cattle and above every beast and the field upon thy belly shall thou go and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life so by this it's it's obviously that the serpent was at those in that time before the curse obviously the serpent must have been walking on its tail it mu I, I don't know but I mean obviously it must have been walking on its tail because it was cursed to walk on its belly so I imagine that's the curse that God gave him because of what he had done every sin has its punishment and God said on continual on the on thy belly shall thou go and the dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life imagine eating dust I don't think normally dust would be the meal for the, for the serpent but the pronunciation that he should eat dust dirt all the days of his life and it says now further on in verse 15 I will put enmity speak still speaking to the serpent I will put enmity between thee and the woman between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel so another curse upon was pronounced upon the serpent that God will put enmity that means war division no peace no accord no unity no there would be war between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman that is to say that evil has perpetuated itself has perpetuated from the garden of eden right up to now the seed of the woman has as we know perpetuated perpetuated until now so God said he would put enmity there would be no peace between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman so when we want to look at who, where whence cometh the seed of the woman and if we look in the book of Isaiah chapter chapter 7 it tells us because Isaiah had prophesied about this very seed of the woman that was going to bruise the head of the serpent seed in Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14 the Lord it says Isaiah prophesied the Lord therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign the Lord himself shall give you a sign behold a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel Emmanuel interpreted interpreted mean God God with us so the seed of the woman was to be a child um, somebody has uh, joined us and has, could you turn your music down please because it's interfering sorry thank you the seed of the woman was that the, woman, the virgin was should conceive and bring forth the seed that God promised that God commend unto the serpent that the seed shall bruise the head of the serpent and Isaiah prof prof prophesied 600 years before the birth of our Lord Jesus how this child will come how this seed of the woman will come 
Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel meaning God with us. God with us. Bless you, my sister. You have a call. Uh, you have a thing in the background. Um, I think it must be sister, sister McLean. Yes, brother Jamson. God bless you. Thank God bless you for joining us. We're looking at um, Isaiah chapter seven, which um, verse fourteen, where God prophesied about the seed that shall come to bruise the head of the serpent. And um, so God had pronounced this upon the devil that, you know, that the seed of the serpent shall bruise the heel of the woman and the seed of the woman would bruise the head of the serpent. And this head of the serpent was Jesus. Jesus was the one, was the seed that came to bruise the head of the serpent and Isaiah prophesied that a virgin would bring forth this seed and we were reading on from Genesis chapter 3 when, when verse 15 when it says I will bring enmity between thee and thy seed and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrows and thy conception. In sorrow shall thou bring forth children, and thy desire shall be unto thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So all these things happen because of just the disobedience of Adam. He will pronounce that upon the woman there was pronounced because of her disobedience that God will multiply her sorrow. So sometimes we see people sorrow, pain and all sorts of things in conception and it's all because of this pronunciation, because of the disobedient. So God has made it clear that there she will multiply the sorrow and conception in sorrow shalt thou bring forth children, thy desire shall be upon thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Furthermore, God pronounced it also unto Adam, and said unto him, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, curse is the ground. We see sometimes we, we one little mistake can cause so much problem. One little bit of disobedience can cause us so much hell. The, the, the judgment pronounced on the on the serpent was well deserved because his his end is gonna be hell anyway. There's no avoiding the seed of the serpent will end up in the pits of hell. There is no repentant on the side. There is no hope on the side of the serpent, nor his seed. They are destined for eternal damnation. There is no coming back. There is no coming back. There is no hope for the serpent. But with Adam, God has lighten the penalty and told them how because God will always make a way for man to come back to him but to serpent is from the fallen one and judgment has pronounced unto him from the day he was thrown out of heaven the judgment was pronounced on them that they would be damned forever they will be cast out of the present. All the angels, the one third of the angel that was cast out with Satan himself, with Lucifer. Their, their judgment was damnation. There was no repentance for those angels who sin against God. 
there's no hope for them. But God has made a way for Adam's fallen race. And look how great God was. He made a way that he himself would be the perfect sacrifice. There had to be a sacrifice. They, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. There had to be a sacrifice for the remission of the sin of the whole world. And so this is the seed that God said would bruise the head of the serpent. And Isaiah prophesied, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, being interpreted mean God with us. So when we talk about God, when we talk about the mysteries, God is not a mystery. The devil is a mystery. Because if we read Genesis in all the way, God was quite clear in what he said and what he commanded. And he was clear also with the consequences of disobedience to his command. He was quite clear. A child would understand. But I think, obviously, if the serpent wasn't there to beguile Eve, there would be no temptation. And that's why the sin of the serpent is greater than the sin of Adam and Eve. And so, in that case, God is a fair judge. He has made a way for the, for the seed of the woman to survive. But for the seed of the devil, Jesus came to destroy and to conquer and to damn. So how great is our God? It says, The Lord himself shall give you a sign in Isaiah, the virgin shall conceive and bear forth a son, and Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and thou shalt call him Emmanuel. Now come over to Luke chapter 1 and verse 26, and we see how God showed himself according to his word. Thousands of years after Adam sinned, Eve sinned and was condemned, God was ready now to bring forth that seed that seed that would trample the head of the serpent. In Luke chapter 1 and verse 26, it says here, In the sixth month, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin, exposed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin name was Mary. You see, why I say God is so, if we check the word of God, God is so consistent in everything that he does. He is so consistent. Someone who's consistent is not a mystery. Because he said, as, as we read in um, Genesis, how he pronounced the Eve, what he pronounced upon the serpent, upon Adam, and upon Eve. And the seed, in the due course of time, as I prophesy, then in the due course of time, the angel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin, to a virgin, to a man whose name, exposed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin name was Mary. Now, 
Jesus is said to be the root and the offspring of David. Jesus is the root and the offspring of David. He is not only a descendant of David, but he is also the root of David. That means out of Jesus came David, and out of David came Jesus. Because Jesus is the root and the offspring, the Bible tells us he is the root and the offspring. Because before David was, Jesus was. Before Abraham was, Jesus was. Before this world was created, Jesus was. The, 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 the physical life of Jesus started, the physical life of Jesus started when Mary conceived and bring forth that child. That's the physical life. But within that physical life was the eternal God. And that's why, what's what we have to understand. Within that physical, that little baby was the spirit of the eternal God. And it was a plan that the God had from the beginning. You know, God, God knows the end. God, God is the author of the beginning and the end. He is the beginning. He's, that's why I say he's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the ending. He is before all. He, he compass all. This is God. So the angel appeared unto Mary as it was written. And it says Joseph was of the house. Of David the lineage of David so God has said to David there will not fail a man to sit upon his throne and Jesus is that man of the house of David and the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Can you imagine how Mary must have felt? Oh, glory be to God. When the angel Gabriel, we know Gabriel is one of the archangels in heaven. Gabriel, Michael, the angel, God sent this angel, one of his top angel, to Mary. And the angel said unto her, Hail thou, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. How blessed, how blessed, how blessed are we? Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw it, she was troubled at the saying and cast her mind to what manner of salutation this should be. What is this all about? She might wonder. Why is it me? She may wonder. But you know what? God. It, we're all special to God. We may not feel it. We may not understand it. But we are all special to God. Every one of us. We are special to God. You see, when, when our mind is upon God, when our heart is upon God, when we set our face to seek the Lord, we are very special. And Mary found herself talking to the Gabriel, the archangel, saying, she was troubled. What manner of salutation is this? Why me? Little me. That's what she must be thinking. Little me. Why me? Um, what am I? 
And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary. You know, it's wonderful whenever God sends an angel to us, they always say, Fear not. God don't want us to have fear. God don't want us to live in fear. God bring good news. God bring peace. God bring joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. God wants his people to be happy. God wants his people to be joyous. And if anything in our life, let us not blame God and say, why me, God? Why me? Let's not say that. Let's not say that. Because Jesus himself has been there. Our Lord has been there. He's been there. Everything bad happened to our Lord. And imagine he's Lord. He's King of glory. And bad things happened to Jesus. He was spit upon. He was cast in prison. He was stripped naked. He was mocked. He was jeered. He suffered. He bled. He died. So sometimes we're going through some things and we say, why me, Lord? Why me? But, you know, we all have our we all have our cross to carry. And, you know, God is so plain as well because he, he said, if any man would come after me, let him deny himself. Self-denial is not an easy thing to do because we all love ourselves. We all love ourselves. Self-denial is not easy, but Jesus, God did not hide. Jesus did not hide. He, he mm -hmm. laid it down. He laid the cards on the table. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. So he didn't promise us a bed of roses, but he did promise us. He, did, he knows, we know, if God take us to the fire, he will take us through the fire. And we have to realize, if God take us to the water, he will take us through the water. That's the assurance we have. So we, we will not be afraid of the fire. Because fire is there, and we are threatened with fire. Oh, if you don't do this, like the three Hebrew boys, you'll be cast into the midst of the fire. Oh, you, you know, Nebuchadnezzar said, oh, if you don't bow before this image, I will make the fire seven times hotter. Hallelujah. But you know what? You have to realize what God is. God himself is fire. Fire is God. God is fire. Fire can't hurt fire. And God is water. He said, I'm the water of life. Any man thirst, let him come unto me. Water can't hurt water. God, water can't, water have to come, come, come obey God's word. Water, it just speak, it stands still. That's why he was able to calm the sea. Say, peace be still. He is governor. He is ultimate of all things. And so, and when, and the angel said unto her, fear not, for thou hast found favor with God. You know, when we love God, we have favor with God. But this was the promise that God promised and told the serpent that this will happen. Mary was to bring forth that seed that would tread upon the head of the serpent because Jesus was the end of the devil. He conquered this. He conquered the devil. He conquered, completely conquered the devil by his obedience. He conquered the devil. He came from the highest. He was the highest of the highest. 
And the Bible said when he died, the Bible said he went down to hell. Can we imagine a man who else can walk into hell? Oh my God. A man can walk into hell. The Bible said he went down into hell and took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. That's all. He was able to tread upon the head of the serpent, completely annihilate the death, the head of the serpent. So the keys of death, hell, and the grave is in the hands of Jesus. Praise his name. Glory be to God. What a great God we serve. So he went on to say, the angel went on to say, Behold, thou shalt conceive. Angel Gabriel talked to, e talked to Mary, Behold, thou shalt conceive. You will have a child. You will be pregnant. And you shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is the seed that will bruise the head of the serpent. God had promised thousands of years before the birth of Jesus. The seed of the woman will completely bruise and kill and annihilate the head of the serpent. God is not a mystery. The devil is a mystery. Let us not think ever think of God as a mystery. God is God was manifested in the man Jesus. Complete manifestation of God was in Jesus. If we know Jesus, we know God. That's why Jesus said clearly, No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's why he said that. No man. There's no way around Jesus to get to God. It has to be Jesus. There's no side door. There's no back door. There's no window. There's no, there's no other way. The only way we know God is through Jesus. Because Jesus is Lord. He's God. The angel said, he shall be great. He shall be called the, the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give him the throne of David, his father. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob and his kingdom shall have no end. Glory be to God. There is only one king. And there will always be just one king. There's only one Lord. And there will always be just one Lord. There will not be another Lord. There will not be a second Lord. There will not be a second king. Gabriel said he shall be his kingdom. He is going to be king forever. And forever and his kingdom there shall be no end. And Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing that I know no man? And this is how it happens. Mary said, How am I going to have a child? I know no man. And the angel answered and said unto him, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, therefore, also the holy thing that which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. The Son of God. Directly the Son of God. 
And that's why Jesus called himself the Son of Man. Because some people don't understand that God is a man. <laughs> you tell them, God is a man. Jesus said, I the Son of Man. God is a man. Amen. And we, we are made in His image. And that's why, you know, we, we, sometimes we say, you know, David, David, what am I? As I said, what am I? Who am I? What am I? David said, I'm just like a worm. But no, God has made us in his image. We look like God. So what we need to do is act like God. God is not a mystery. But we see God in Jesus. God is seen in Jesus. My brethren, God bless us. God bless you all. Bless you. Um, let us see God for who he is. He's not a God that's far off. He's a God near to us. He's very near to us. He's not a God. He's not a, he's not a strange God. He's not a strange God. You have to see God the way he sees us. Because the love he showed for us is unmeasurable. Unmeasurable. The love he show for us is beyond measure. And if we only realize how God loves us, we will throw away everything and fall at the feet of Jesus. Because God is love. God bless you, my brethren. I remind us that God is not a mystery. God is not a mystery. God bless you all. I'm glad to see uh, Pastor Winston and our uh, dear Sister McLean. Pastor Winston, God bless you. God bless you too, sir. Uh, would, like, would you like to say a few words to us before? Um, and then I want you to also pray for Sister McLean. She's not well. Um, she's got a cold, which is going around very much now. So... If you could just give us a few words and then at the end we'll ask you to just pray for Sister. We, we join hearts with you to pray for Sister McLean. Good evening, Virgin. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good, good evening. And um, Sister McLean, so sorry to tell you that you're not very well. But we're here to pray. We're here to pray with you and to believe God with you that He will heal you. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 25. Under thee, O God, I do lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let them in not ashamed. Let my not my enemy jump over me. Do not tempt it. Lord, is trust in thee. Yeah, amen. Touch our Lord. Touch our Lord. Touch our Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes.
Touch your Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Heal your Lord. We believe God for healing. Yes, Lord. Touch our Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Mighty God. My God. By faith. By faith. By faith. By faith, Lord. Touch your Lord. Look up to my mighty God. Yes, Lord, heal our Lord. Heal our Lord. Heal our Lord. Heal Lord. Heal Lord. Lord. Lord, Jesus. Amen. Touch yes, Lord. Touch Lord. Touch Lord, Lord Jesus. Free your voice. Free your Lord. Free all you need to be free tonight, Lord. When you're looking at the right, just on the pause. You can deliver. You can deliver. Mm. You can deliver. You can deliver, Lord. Touch our Lord Jesus. Touch our Lord. Heal your body, Lord. Touch our Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. In your name we call upon you. Because you are God. In your name we pray. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Receive. Receive a healing from you tonight, Lord. Receive a healing from you, Lord. Oh God, to the top. We tell you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, and heal all the diseases. Hallelujah, Father, Lord. Give us the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Give us the strength tonight. In your mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen and amen.